Welcome back to Wrenches in Motion, where if it ain't broke, I ain't buying it. And today, well, yeah, we got something broke, all right. Wait till you get a load of this pile we just brought home. Uh, so this is the 2003 Mazda Tribute. I'll show you a list that the, uh, that the place gave us. Something's all wrong with it. Well, we can start with front rotors and pads. I think they had tires on the list. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll show you the list. Anyway, oh yeah. So that tire's shot. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad on this side. We're going to try to heat this and bang this out. And the taillight lens. Um, let's see, get around this side. Yeah, I'm just... This brought home wasn't very far. Oh, that tire's got a lot of meat left. Okay, we got one good one. And eh, it might be passable, but I'll tell you what, since we got one really good one, it's the old Walmart special Dextero. So if I just go ahead and get three more, get them on there. I think that was on the list. Three tires mounted and balanced. Uh, rear brake drum and hardware, so we'll figure out more of that when we take a look. Inside we've got some leather. And the camera battery's about to die, so let us get this thing off the trailer, and then we'll uh, take a better look at it. Today's video is brought to you by Leha Handmade. L-E-I-J-A Handmade on Facebook and they make uh, keychains um, you know they do any color and they engrave whatever you want on here with the laser engraver I got these ones for Kenny I thought they were pretty cute little picture of Kenny and uh, written on Kenny they made my wrenches in motion mug which I really like he actually designed the logo thanks Louie and they made the uh, fleet guard oil filter cup you may have seen this one on the channel. I've used it before. I uh, really like it. So if you want something custom made, and you want you want it to say anything you want, give Leha Handmade a, a ring or a message on Facebook. Let them know Wrenches in Motion sent you over. And, uh, yeah, enjoy your stuff. Yeah, All right. <laughs> so here it is. And... All right. So take a look on the inside. Uh, it's showing a code 403, P0403, which is something to do with the EGR. Uh, it says control circuit, but whatever. Uh, let's start this thing up. 175,000 miles. It actually runs good. Yeah, I mean, not bad at all. You'll see uh, it start flashing the airbag code 46, so we got to look at that. The battery light is on because the alternator's no good. So we got to fix that right away. Uh, yeah, check engine light for the P0403. We got uh, a dead radio. I mean, it's not dead. It's got music in it. Hey, we got CDs. All right, I got to give her her CDs back. If it'll eject them. Okay, it's not going to eject it. Perfect. Uh, all the windows work. The passenger door lock actuator does not work, so we'll be replacing that. Um, Dirt-wise, not too bad. I can't believe this battery is dead in this camera already. I just... And some stuff in the back seat to clean up. No big deal. Come back here. See if I can get the right one. There we go. Window. Yep, those struts are broke. Well, they're not broke. They're just not working. However, the hat struts work fine. So we got to get window struts. Or I don't know if this was uh, mice back here, but it's all down in there too. So what we do now is. Uh, Take the mat out, get a vacuum cleaner, start cleaning this thing up, 
and see what we got. Oh. Did I show you the broken tail light? I think I did. And the bumper thing, we're gonna try to heat that up and bend that out. And then three tires. The one that's good is one of these uh, Walmart Dexteros, so we're gonna get three other Walmart Dexteros, and it'll have a matching set. Uh, so this has the dreaded P0403, and they replaced the EGR valve, which is never the case. Um, see this connector in the back of the solenoid? And if you can see, it's got like a really sharp angle to it. And what happens is, after years of vibrating, and because it's at that much of an angle, the wire breaks, and then the solenoid never comes on. So to test that, I'm going to take this off real quick. Notice there's no uh, um, push tab on there, because that's broke. Uh, we'll get this out of the way. I'm going to take the solenoid off. There's uh, two 8mm bolts that you're not going to be able to see me take it off. Um, and I don't want to drop the bolts, so I'm going to have to have two hands on it. Um, uh, the light's kind of in the way, but... So those two bolts, uh, it's got a couple of vacuum hoses on it. I'll take those off. And I'll hit it with 12 volts while blowing in it. And when you hit it, it should allow air through. And if you don't hit it, it should be solid. Uh, like should be blocked so let me get this off I will bring this in and we'll test it I've got a meeting in 10 minutes so I'm going to just take this off do the meeting and then we'll uh, come back when we're testing it so I'm trying to get you in as close as I can but pr probably not gonna be enough these are eights hey, please don't drop it On the back side Also, I'm wearing a clean shirt, so I don't want to get it dirty. I've got dentist appointment coming up. Oh, one's a bolt, one's a nut. Okay, either way, I don't want to drop either one of them. Uh. There we go. Okay, it's a bolt. And let's get these vacuum lines off. Oh, I just said, let's get these vacuum lines off. Oh, there we go. And I did hear it go pss. So, chances are this is good. Let's bring it in the shop and test it, because I got a feeling this is just fine. All right, we've got this in the shop. Uh, just power and ground, so we'll hook those up. I guess the first thing I want to do is just hear it click. And if it clicks, it's probably going to be good. So let's... Uh, Hook our ground up here. This is before we even blow through it. Grab our 12 volts. Oh, it's not clicking. Oh. It's not clicking at all. I think we found the problem. I think that is actually bad. Okay. Well, I have to go to the junkyard and get the tail light for it. So I think I'm gonna grab one of those. And uh, what I'll probably do is I'll probably cut the wires back to here or so. That way we get the pigtail. And uh, if we have to swap that out, we'll swap that out. Well, successful trip to the junkyard. Um, let's see, here's the old broke tail light. We got a nice new one. Not new, but new to me. Um, we got a radio. This one does not have the cassette deck. It's all empty under there, but who cares? Who needs a cassette deck? We got the solenoid, which uh, this one clicked, so hopefully that's going to work for us. And then we got this cool thing right here. This is the cargo cover. I know it's not quite the right color, but it'll work. It's better than not having a cargo cover. Oh, so before I put the tail light in, um, I really want to get the heat gun and heat this up and see if I can pop that out a little bit. Just to make it a little better. I mean, this this is not going to get fixed, but we'll see if we can make this look a little better. Uh, I got the heat gun. Now, I don't know. I'm not the strongest person, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to push this out or not, but I figure we'll give it a shot, right? I mean...
Probably anything would be better than what it looks like now. I was thinking about getting a 2x4 in here and pushing on it, which may actually help. Oh, well, it's doing something. Oh, oh look at that. I don't know if that's going to come out or not. That's a pretty, that's a pretty tight um, smash, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, get a little bit too warm. Okay. Well, take a look at that. And you tell me if that don't look better. I mean, you know, it's still, it's still what it is, but I think it looks a whole lot better than it did. All right. Now, oh my gosh, let's, uh, let's get this tail light in real quick. Clean up the bulbs while we're here make them as bright as they can be for being incandescents. All right. Yeah. This should go quick. That one there. This one here, maybe. Okay, what's going on here? I didn't think he went way over here. But you do. Okay. Bottom one. Just like that. Push these tabs in. Like that. Drop a couple screws in. No reason to get the electric screwdriver for two screws. And there you have it. Well, wow, that's coming along nicely so far. And we haven't hardly done anything. I'll take it. All right. So the next thing is going to be uh, put this cover in. And let's go back to the engine compartment. We'll try to throw this uh, solenoid in and see if we can get rid of this P0403. Alright, we've got it up on ramps. We're going to uh, take a look for uh, oil leaks underneath. Because they said it needs a pan gasket, and I don't think so. I'm hoping it's a valve cover gasket. We're going to crawl under there with a flashlight and take a look. Uh, we're going to get some brake cleaner, spray off the brake. Spray off the brake. We're going to get some brake cleaner, spray off the oil pan, uh, wipe it down. And uh, we'll crawl under it when it's running and take a look also, see what we see. So yesterday when I was in here, oh, I left my pick. Um, took the dash apart. We replaced the radio. This one does not have a cassette deck, which is fine. Who needs that? Uh, got that in. While I was doing that, the, uh, the hazard switch is broke. It, it doesn't stay in, doesn't stay on. So we're gonna have to go back to the junkyard, grab us a hazard switch. Uh, and then maybe we can uh, get this interior put back together. I mean, it's not really torn apart, but you know. We'll get it back together again. And something, something else I wanted to show you is 
We did end up replacing the uh, solenoid and I was wrong and I guess other people on YouTube were wrong. They say you hit it with the 12 volts, you can hear it click. I never heard it click. Um, the one I got from the junkyard, put it on, cleared the check engine light, it came on again instantly. I put this one on, cleared it, check engine light's gone. So that's obviously our problem. I'm glad it wasn't the wiring. I'm glad it was just the uh, just a solenoid, but that was 40 bucks I didn't want to spend. But I'd rather have it fixed than have a check engine light all the time. And I was, uh, you're not going to be able to see it. But I think the radiator is leaking from this top hose where this top hose goes in because it's a little wet under there. So we may end up replacing a radiator after all. No big deal, it's like 120 bucks. Um, and not real time consuming, I'm pretty sure it's, it's just gonna come straight out the top, so. Easy there, okay. Let's get a flashlight and some brake cleaner and some paper towels and let's clean this thing up and take a look and see what we see. So it's just been sitting here for a couple minutes and we've already got some drips on the ground. Uh, what I want to show you is, yeah, someone put one of those in. And that's leaking for sure. So we got that issue. And looking up, I don't think it's coming down from the valve cover. I think it is probably the pan gasket. But with this pan being the way it is, I think we're going to need a new oil pan. In order to get that, we need to disconnect the exhaust. And figure the uh, oh that one's welded that top nut's welded and that one's so that's why they said torch it out oh man i don't want to do that i don't want to do that um oh i mean everything else under here looks pretty well okay as far as the suspension goes, uh, if you look up here, you'll see some oil dripping on here. And I tried to take a look up and it's either the pan or I don't think it's a valve cover. So what I was hoping it was, it's not. Let me get this thing uh, blasted with some brake cleaner and we'll take a better look at it. Well, good news, it's been running and uh, oil pan is still bone dry. There's nothing leaking anywhere on the oil pan, which means coming from somewhere else and dripping down. Um, I did see what I think is a little bit by the AC compressor. Uh, I'll probably take this uh, wheel liner out and take a better look in there, see what we may have. We may have to put a timing cover gasket on it, um, but at least it's not the oil pan. Oil pan's nice and dry. Uh, so I'm happy about that. Uh, I'm not real happy about that, but if it holds and it doesn't leak, I'm, real, I'm willing to roll with that. It sure beats blowing out all the uh, exhaust studs and, and redoing the exhaust, because I really don't want to do that. All right, let's get this thing off the ramps and, uh, or leave it on the ramp so Tomorrow we can pull the alternator out of this thing. Okay, last thing before we put the dash together is the uh, hazard switch. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this one-handed or not. I'm gonna try though. Hey, look at that. Hazards work. And they shut off. On, off, good. Whew, all right, now. I can go ahead and put the dash back together. You know, got all the all the connectors, gotta go back in. Uh, there's two seven millimeters that go up from the bottom that hold this in. They're like right here and right here. Um, the rest just snaps in. Uh, not that difficult, except for this. This has gotta get bolted back in. There's, once again, seven millimeters. Thanks, Ford. Uh, four of them to bolt that in. And then we can uh, clean this dash up and go ahead and put it back in and hopefully I'll never have to take this dash out again. 
Not that it's difficult, it's just I'd rather not have to keep on doing it. So we'll pull the uh, hazard switch back out of there, bolt it up here, it goes right here, and then, uh, yeah, we'll be uh, done with the dash. And if you were here, you'd be listening to nothing because I've been so busy working and filming that I've totally forgotten about bringing music out here. Well, I think the sun's going down, or something. Clouds, maybe, because it sure got dark all of a sudden. And the dash is back together. We got a working hazard switch. I just tried the CD player. The CD player works. Uh, this one's not a CD changer, but oh well. It is a CD player, and it does work. That's one thing crossed off the list. Um, let's check the sunroof while we're here, tell you the truth. Since we're here, since we ain't doing nothing else. Oh, windshield wipers are going. Ah! All right, how do we open this now? This? Oh, there we go. And it shuts. Well, that's pretty perfect. Okay, notice this uh, rear view mirror's got the compass in it and the temperature readout. That's pretty awesome. And our stupid check engine light's back. So hopefully, when I replace the alternator, I'm hoping maybe it's just a low voltage thing and that'll go away. Um, it did. It was throwing a code for it wasn't ready since the last time it was cleared. So I may have to clear it, take it for a drive, let it go through its cycle, and then maybe it'll stay clear. Um, the AC does not work. The compressor never kicked on. So I'm going to check the fluid. Not fluid, the Freon. Um, I might vacuum it down, see if it's got a leak anywhere. Um, before I fill it up, I'm definitely going to vacuum it down. But... Uh, All right, before we get into the tribute, let us take a look at what they said was wrong. Uh, I'm hoping you're going to be able to read this too. Uh, coolant exchange, power steering fluid exchange. Replace rear brake shoes, hardware, and drums. Uh, replace the right front axle. Torch out the bolts for the exhaust because further down it says replaced oil pan. And in order to do that, you have to uh, remove some of the exhaust. So you got to torch some bolts out, re -put, put new bolts in, etc. Replace the steering gear, uh, replace the alternator, power steering pump, both rear brake hoses. So now you've got shoes, drums, hardware, and hoses for the rear, uh, radiator, and hose clamps. Okay, and that's what they said. All this was going to cost seven thousand dollars so um yeah they did not do that instead they uh sold it to me cheap uh let me grab a flashlight real quick hopefully you can see this so this is why they say it needs a new axle the uh clamp came off uh okay i've got the tool I don't have any more banding material, but I've got the tool, so maybe I'll uh, order some more banding material and uh, throw a new clamp on that axle, on the boot. Uh, that'll fix that. Let me get this splash shield out. We do have to get the alternator out because it's definitely bad. So First thing we're going to do is uh, disconnect the battery, uh, get the splash shield out, and then work, work on that alternator. And I've done these before, and they are no fun whatsoever. Um, there's, I think there's three bolts for the alternator to hold it in. Uh, the top one, you come in through the top with a really long 13mm uh, uh, flex head wrench, which I have. I had to buy it. Um, the other two bolts are easy enough to get from the bottom. And then uh, the electricals. And then in order to get it out, it won't come out through the top. Uh, there's a space between the control arm and stuff. I think you got to take the axle out. 
and then you can get it out of there. But it's a it's a super tight fit. I hate doing these, uh, but it needs to be done. So, you know, you do what you got to do. All right. So if you can see up in there is the alternator, and you do have to take the axle out because this is the tiny area that you have to get the alternator out. And I'm going to tell you, it only comes out one way. Um, there is a lot of twisting and turning and cursing, and eventually it comes out. <sighs> so we got that to deal with. Um, the oil leak, um, it is not the pan. So I'm going to get some brake cleaner, and I'm going to spray the crap out of all this. Uh, get it fairly dry, and then start it. And let it run for a little bit and see what happens. It looks like it may be a little bit right here. Um, but it could be coming from somewhere else. So it's best just to blast everything, get it all nice and clean. And then see where it's leaking from. Because who really wants to drop the exhaust and change this pan? Not me. Okay, well at the end of the day, uh, we did get the alternator out. Uh, wow, what a pain. But we got it. Um, control arm, and ball joint's definitely shot, I know that bushing shot. Um, the passenger side axle that I thought I might just be able to, uh, reband the boot. Nope, it came apart in three pieces. Great. So now I need to order an axle. I just ordered control arms, sway bar links, and... Uh, the glass struts for the back. And now the axle. But yeah, this is that tiny area. Let me get a flashlight in there. This is that tiny area you have to get the alternator out. <laughs> There's a uh, supposed to be a bolt a stud sticking out of there. And I just cut it off because there's no way to get it out of there with that in there. So cut that off. It came out. Um, I did not expect the transmission to drip as much fluid as it did once I uh, broke the, once I pulled the axle out. So, there's that. Okay, and I am done for the night. Um, I helped my buddy Tony get his Nova running, which was awesome. And then we pulled the distributor out to make some room. We beat on the firewall a little bit so we could... Um, Give the spark plug wires some more room in there. And we drop the distributor back in. And it never started again. So. Yep, yeah, there's that. Okay, so that's it for today. I am going to pack this stuff up. Go take a shower, wash clothes, and probably go to bed super early because I'm tired. Hey, look what we have here. We have a uh, shiny rebuilt alternator. All right. Perfect. Uh, this was sitting on the bench. They just had to change out the regulator. So they did that uh, less than a half hour. And $97 after tax. Here's a fresh alternator. Uh, let's grab this thing. Uh, there, there's no nut on here. So I think the old one is under there somewhere. So I'm going to take the jack, get the jack out of there. Because I think I probably ran the, the nut over when I slid the jack under there. And then uh, try to put this in and see what we get. Of course, you can't see a thing under here, of course. But, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to, once we can get it up in here and turned around the right way, we'll go ahead and hook the wires to it. And then... Uh, should be good to go. Well, it's in. Uh, I just put that half of the stub axle in there. I bolted that in because I'm going to try to start it, let it run for a little bit. And I didn't want the uh, transmission fluid to all just pour out. So what we're going to do is we're going to start it, let it run. And I'm going to cut a little bit of grass when I come back. Hopefully. Um... We don't see any oil leaks, or we see where they're coming from, so we can get that figured out. And if you were here, you'd be listening to Above by Finger Eleven. I saw them in concert way back when. It was a pretty, pretty good concert. 
All right. Now, let's see if we get this battery light. Oh. And the battery light's out. Well, we'll take that. The uh, check engine light's out, but that's just because we just hooked the battery back up. Awesome. All right. Very nice. Uh, still runs as good as it did before. Okay, let's let this run and we'll uh, come back in about 10 minutes and check for oil leaks. We had it running for a while. Uh, I don't really see any oil leaks, so it's nothing major. There, there is obviously some oil leaking, but you know this, this got wet again. But it's just, you know, I don't see anything major. What I do see though, is I look down, and I saw this puddle underneath, and uh, the transmission was all wet, and it's coming from the seal for the axle, way up in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this axle back out. I've only got half of it because the other half is right there. Get a new one. Um, and there used to be two 13 millimeter nuts in there. Now there's only one because I ground the other stud off to get the alternator out. So we'll uh, unbolt that, pull this uh, stub axle out, and I'll get the seal puller and we'll see if we can get the seal out. I ordered another one. Should be here sometime this morning. So I'm gonna run to the store and on the way back, I'm going to stop back at the auto parts store and see if it's in. Hopefully it is. Uh, we get the seal put in, get the stub axle put in, and then we'll be, you know, one step closer. Okay, well, it's afternoon, and we just got parts in. Uh, we have our new axle. Uh, we're going to try to put the stub axle back in there, dry that thing up, because I cannot find that part anywhere. Uh, we've got our new control arm, fresh with a ball joint. Uh, sway bar end link and these here I'm gonna try to take them off but they never come off so I might as well just go ahead and get the angle grinder and get ready to just cut these things off um, yeah so I think I, I do have the control arm and the sway bar link for the other side but I don't think I'm gonna do those right now I think I just want to get this thing running and driving so I can um, flip it around and check the back brakes because you know, they said the back brake, um, shoes, drums, hoses, hardware, and bleed everything, which I totally don't believe, but that's what they said. So I want to check those out just to be sure. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll, uh, well, we're going to start by drying that thing out, putting the stub axle back in, and then we'll come out here and tackle these uh, sway bar links. What I don't like about these is the grease zerks are on the outside and these are on the, the side which is a good location right here uh i just hope it doesn't get in the way of anything it shouldn't but you know how are you going to grease the top one when the back is up against the frame rail you're not gonna can you believe this is working usually the allen head strips out and then you're left with you know nothing but there we go. It came out. Wow, color me impressed. Okay, let's try the other side, which is going to be uh, roughly the same, except I'm not going to be able to break it loose with a half inch impact. So hopefully it starts coming out. Well, if you've done any sort of automotive work, you know this just does not happen. I think we're going to be two for two. And we are. Oh, I don't even know how that happens. But here we are. It's out. I, I don't even know what to say. I, I just... I got the torch out for nothing. Or not the torch. I got the uh, grinding wheel out for nothing. Alright, let's put the new ones in. 
and we'll uh, throw the uh, what do you call it the uh, throw the control arm in take a look at that see how well that's going to go in we don't drop that all right I'll come back when we start the control arm well you're gonna love this <laughs> I got it all back together and I looked and I'm realizing you missed one important thing yeah we don't have a Bluetooth axle <sighs> so now I gotta try to knock this ball joint out of here again and uh, I hope that's all I have to do in order to get the axle in should be able to pull this out far enough um, should being the operative word I uh, might have to unbolt the knuckle from the strut in order to do it. It's, it's one of those things. Okay, after a bunch of nonsense, it was my mistake. Let's uh, throw the rotor and caliper back on. By the way, Ford, who uses 18 millimeter bolts? Nobody. Nobody. Everyone's like 17. No, you got to be different. You got to be 18. Uh, let's get these pads back in here. Oh, did I have the... Did I have the thing in the... Piston? Oh, they sure do. Yeah, those are real fun to put in. Come on, get in there. There's another... Better idea from Ford. Right, let's drop this on here. So we get the caliper bolt started. And be nice if we can see something. Oh, we're not even close. That's close. Might even be there. Let's try the bottom one. Sorry, I'm in your way. That happens. Okay, the bottom's going in. Top one. Let's see. Top one going in, bottom one going in. Bottom one came out of alignment. Bottom one's in. Top one's in. All right, we're gonna get our uh, just our regular ratchet. S snug these bad boys up. Throw the tire on, get this thing off these jack stands. I'm not going to put the splash shield in yet. I'll do that later. I just want to... I just want to run this thing and take it for a drive. Because I haven't even driven it. Ugh. So hopefully when I get back from Florida, I'll be able to take this thing and go get tires put on. sell it cheap and just just do tires and say good enough oh, I should look at the AC cars around here like to sell with AC and I don't blame them I like AC a lot oh, come here oh. today's not a bad day today it feels like 80 All right, let's get this thing off jack stands. Um, get the torque wrench, we'll torque this wheel. Take it for a drive. All right, so this here, the uh, glass struts are shot, as you can see. So we got some new ones. Let me put these on. Why do these seem awful long? 
No, because they're extended, maybe? Uh, let's take a look at these. They seem... They almost seem like they're for the hatch, not for the glass. No, never mind. Yeah, they're for glass. All right. So, here we go. A little clip. Maybe. Maybe I grabbed the wrong size screwdriver. All right, there's one side. Use the head vise. Oh, oh they feel pretty, pretty good in there. Oh. Let me get a hook. I'll be right back. Okay, right tool for the job. Let's try that. Let's get head vise. I just wanted to feel like I got something accomplished today, that's all. And there we go. Oh yeah, much better. Whoops. I'll take it. Good. All right, here we go. Take it for his first drive. Uh, the only thing we drove it was in the parking lot at the dealer to put it up on the trailer. So I don't know if it's gonna shift. Oh, we got our check engine light back. How about that? Woohoo! Oh, it shifts smooth. Take a run down Cotton Farm here real quick. Oh yeah. Oh, this thing drives good. All right, let me go to the end. We'll turn around and uh, we'll get it up to speed and see how she does at like 65. All right, let's take this thing up to speed. shakes in the front. Transmission seems fine. Yep. I think we have a winner right here. All right, let's pull it back in. Uh, backwards, we'll check these back brakes that they say are bad. Okay, remember they said it needs drums, hardware, shoes. Let's take a look in here and see what we see. All right, the drum's got some dust in there. Um, shoes look good. Hardware looks good. There is nothing at all wrong with these back brakes. I might get some brake cleaner, spray in there, clean it out, and then go do the other side, but... There is absolutely nothing wrong with these back brakes. Uh, I thought I was going to be mistaken on this side. Uh, the drum was kind of hard to get off, but uh, just a little bit of prying, it came right off. And same thing over here. 
nothing wrong with these brakes at all. So I'm going to, once again, spray brake, brake cleaner in here, clean all this up, and I'll uh, put this back together and call the back end good. Okay, it's a different day. I just got back uh, two weeks out. It is hot out here. I just brought the camera from inside the house, so it wants to fog up. We've got the uh, vacuum hooked up. We're going to pull a vacuum on it, and let's see what it does. All right. I don't remember where I left off, so we're just going to do a little tribute update. Um, definitely need a radiator. I've got that ordered. Um, the AC does have a leak, which I did not show, but um, hooked the vacuum pump up. Pumped it down to zero or negative 30. Turned it off and within five seconds the uh, the gauge started, it started losing the vacuum. I did see a bunch of dye on the high pressure side uh, where the Schrader valve is. So I ordered new Schrader valves, at least the cores anyway. I'm going to replace those and then pump it down again and, and see if the leak is still there. Um, tires, I ordered tires through Walmart. There they are. They just came in yesterday. I got the same ones that's on here because this is a good one. Like lots of lots of nice deep tread and everything. So I just got three to match. That's why I went with Walmart and uh, drove to Walmart. Lo and behold, the auto center was, I don't know if it's closed permanently, but it was all dark and that kind of sucked. So I do know a tire guy. And I'm going to drive this over there maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Don't know yet. Uh, I'm going to get the tires done. I'm going to bring my scanner and my laptop with the VCDS software because he's got a VW Tiguan that doesn't want to start. And I believe it's a security issue because um, it'll start with starting fluid. But... I don't think the fuel pump is kicking on. I can't hear it. So I want to bring uh, either VCDS so I can turn the fuel pump on or my scanner should be able to command the fuel pump on. We'll see. But anyway, uh, back to this. I've still got to polish the headlights. No big deal. And this is sold, by the way. Um, the guy's going to come pick it up this weekend, which means I have to get going because I've got a lot of stuff to do in a short amount of time. Right now, we're going to pull this in. We're going to do the back brake hoses. Uh, my friend Bert's on the way back uh, to help me bleed them once we're done. I'll take care of that. I got to do the oil pan still because that's leaking. And I'm going to try to do it without dropping the exhaust. Wish me luck. Now, now that we got the wheels off, um, I don't know how much you can see on there, but the core is starting to split. So that's not going to be good. Let's go over this other side. You should be able to see this side better. Yeah. You can see it's starting to split right there. And that may just be the outer jacket. The inner, the inner uh, hose might be okay. But as the inner hose swells when you push uh, pressure on, this helps keep the pressure inside the hose and with this this may bubble and end up leaking over time so we got new lines let's go ahead and replace those hey with our sung song you know these are gonna be high quality right here but it looks like they're, they're gonna work so we'll throw these in and uh when Burke gets here we'll bleed them Wanna know something else I like about living in the south? Look at that brake line. Yep, it just came right off. Look at that. And it's gonna start leaking, which is fine. This one here. And I watch all these I watch all these YouTube guys struggle with brake lines. Oh, and look at that. That one's free, too. Of course, this ain't very old. I mean, it's an old three, but still, I mean, that, we're just gonna, we're just gonna take the brake line right out, just like that. So here's our two nasty brake lines. Let's see if we can get a good look at them. Oh, yeah. Both of them are shot. And 
There we are, nice pretty new line in there. The other side's the same, new line. They were like five bucks. And, you know, I'm selling this, obviously. Oh, it's another five bucks for, for someone's safety. I'll spend that every day. All right, so I'm just waiting for Bert to get here so we can bleed them. And then, uh, uh, get this down, bring his truck in, charge the AC. We already vacuumed it down, we found out there's no leaks, so we're good to go there. Uh, the white pilot got thrown back there again. We'll pull that in after we're done with all this stuff. Uh, but the, yeah, this oil pan's next. I forgot I need to do the lower control arm on this side. So we'll get that knocked out and a sway bar link. And this connector for the EVAP solenoid, uh, I'm gonna replace it if I can get the wire stripped back enough. I've got another connector that I know ohms out good. So I will swap that out and see if that clears our P403. Hopefully it will. And other than that, oh, did I tell you? I don't think I told you. I fixed the radio knob. Yay! Uh, replace that. The one that came with the radio was uh, broken, so it was real hard to turn on and off and, and change the volume. But that's all good now. Uh, what else we got? We got control arm, sway bar link, oil pan, connector, tires. All right, we got the back brakes bled. Uh, that was pretty uneventful. So, like me, I can't leave well enough alone, even though it's like 95 degrees out here and I'm sweating like crazy. Uh, we do have this disconnected. Uh, I think we're going to disconnect this right here, so give us a little bit more room. Try to pull back some of this loom, get some more uh, wire here, because it's probably going to be broke right in here, super close to the connector. So I'm going to cut it back a little bit. Um, this here, I've got plenty of wire. Hopefully it'll give us a little bit extra length. And uh, it'll not be such a sharp, a sharp angle into that sensor, or solenoid. And I've still got to tighten that up because it's still loose. But that's neither here nor there. Let's, uh, yeah, let's get in here and see if we can get this stuff, uh, these wires lengthened. All right, so we're, gonna, we're in here. We're going to attempt to do the control arm and the sway bar link. Uh, first step, of course, is to lose your wrench or your ratchet or whatever. Let's get this thing off here. And there's the phone. So we got the control arm out. Um, wasn't that difficult. Uh, ball joint's shot. That bushing over there is shot. Um, how it did, however, pull, uh, pull that boot or separated that part of the axle so I brought that in the in the garage and uh, put it back together the correct way so that's done I'm going to throw the axle in and I think I'm going to put the control arm in and uh, see where we're at but hopefully we're good from there so I finished up the control arm on this side put everything back together and then me, I can't leave well enough alone. So I'm draining oil and gonna prepare to uh, take the oil pan off. I'm gonna try, and I stress try, to do it without dropping the exhaust. Don't know if it can happen, but I really don't wanna drop the exhaust. So hopefully this thing will come out. Uh, so we're under here. Uh, we got the first exhaust flange off, the second one, of course the nuts are rounded over, why wouldn't they be? Uh, so there's a the saying, once the uh, hot wrench comes out, it's, it's a bad day. Well, I kind of agree and I kind of disagree. I kind of disagree because if that's coming out, chances are we're going to get them nuts off of there and we're going to get this exhaust dropped. 
and the blue torch or the, the blue wrench worked hot wrench whatever you want to call it uh, we got them off you can see these are not in the great shape in the world so we'll have to get new nuts but um, I just heated them up till they were red hot use the uh, use the Milwaukee and just just like touch the trigger and you know just spin it real little bit little bit and uh, sure enough came off so now we got we got the exhaust off the headers and there's two more bolts where it goes into the cat I'm gonna try to leave those take this brace off that's under there and hopefully I can just I just got to drop it you know four or five inches and I and I'll have plenty of room oh my gosh that was that was something else hot wrench comes through again I'll tell you you can't live without those things. I got the oil pan out. I'm looking at it. I mean, this gasket is flat. So, yeah, it was leaking. I mean, we got a gasket here. But up here, it's perfectly flat. Over here, it's perfectly flat. All this front edge. So, no wonder this thing was leaking. All right. Let's uh, blow this one out with some air and pop this oil pan in. Oh boy, what a uh, deal that was. So the oil pan's in, no leaks. But, of course, the uh, exhaust that I had a problem with trying to get off, yeah, that, uh, well, let's just say, one of, the, one of the nuts is on the studs, and it won't tighten, and it won't loosen. It just sits there and spins. So that stud is stripped, and I have no idea what I'm going to do now. And it is hot, so that's it for now. Next thing on this is probably going to be the radiator. That's the next big project. After that, let's try to fix this exhaust. Well, we are back once again. And uh, the last time I vacuumed down the system... I mean, it went all the way down, but as soon as I turned the pump off, like within five seconds, it it started going. So we know we had a leak. Um, I did the first thing I could think of, and the cheapest thing, was the uh, AC service ports. These things, the cores for the Schrader valves, tend to leak. But these aren't... You're not just going to go get these anywhere. I had to order these on eBay. And it was a whole kit, and it came with this particular tool, which you're going to need because it's got a much larger diameter than the standard size. And you will need a channel locks to turn that because these things are in there tight. So they've been replaced. I'm about ready to uh, vacuum it down, and we'll uh, see if it holds a vacuum. All right, well, here it is, an hour and a half later. And we are still on the pegs. So I'm going to say that that one right there, the high side, because I did see the um, die in the high side port, I'm going to say that that was our culprit right there. So next thing to do is uh, go eat some Freon, charge this thing up, and see if we got some AC working. Alright, well we just charged the AC, and let's see what we get. I'd like to see like 36, 38, and I think we're going to be close. The pilot got down to 35. Oh yeah, that's cold. No way. Wow, that's working pretty good. Thirty one degrees. 
Well, I think we're going to take that. It is definitely blowing cold. So, uh... Yeah. Um... <laughs> what do I say? Um... So really, the only thing we got left is... We got to fix the exhaust leak that I caused. We got to buff the headlights. And we got to change the radiator, which is supposed to be here today. Well, lo and behold, look at this. We have the radiator in place. Uh, my friend Jamie came over and we totally knocked it out of the park. Uh, not the funnest thing in the world, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Oh, geez. All right. So, last thing we got to do is we got to put tires on it, which are in the back. And hopefully I can get that done Tuesday while I go look at my friend Ramon's Tiguan that won't start. Trade him a little bit of labor on the Tiguan for mounting three of the tires. So this thing will have new tires. It's already sold. And I'm not going to buff the headlights because they're good enough. Yep. So all that's left now is start it. We're going to let it get hot. Uh, suck down some of the antifreeze, which it shouldn't take too much. Let it cool down and then... Uh, Fill it up and it'll be done. Well, the last thing I had to do is put tires on it. And it's got tires on it. And you see no tag on the back, which means this thing has been sold. So, that concludes the video of the 2003 Mazda Tribute. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, we did quite a bit to it and uh, fixed everything it needed. So I'm happy with it. The guy that bought it's happy with it. He's coming to pick it up, I think, tomorrow. So it'll be gone. And uh, it's time to get on back to the white pilot, I believe. I think we're going to get back on that one. So that's it for this video. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Keep the wheels down and keep your wrenches in motion.